Kaya Muda is pretty Imam, Kaya Muda is pretty Yoga, Kaya Nona Court. So in a language that's been spoken and resonating in this area for over 50,000 years and probably closer to 65,000 years, hello big important men, big important women, hello everybody. Nija Wajak, Nunga Buja, Nija Maragara, Nija Double Yerrigan. So this is the land of the Noongar people, particularly the Wajak clan, and you heard Richard Volley's wonderful uh, welcome to country. This area is they call Madagarup, and you can see that magnificent bridge across there. And the Double Yarragan is the meeting point of the fresh and the salt water. And I acknowledge the elders of the Noongar nation, particularly the Wajak people, uh, past and present. So uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to present here today. It's a fantastic gathering. Um, it's incredibly exciting. And Megan, you have inspired us today with uh, your wonderful vision for, uh, for the Space Agency. So thank you so much for that. Uh, no, someone's walked off. No, it's over here. Excuse me, folks. All right. Um, I've got a few slides to show, and I will try and get through them fairly quickly because, Gordon, you wanted to finish this whole, whole thing two minutes early today. Is that right? Okay, I, I got the message. Um, so very briefly, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a snapshot of history. Um, but what we're doing is building on a tradition that's 50,000 to 65,000 years old. It's a long heritage of Western Australians studying astronomy. Um, as you've heard from the, uh, the Premier and you've heard from uh, the, the Governor, we, you know, we, we go back to having ground stations that have been tracking NASA, NASA missions. We have long uh, held uh, connections with the Japanese Space Agency, the Swedish Space Agency, uh, the European Space Agency, and uh, it's hoped that we will actually be able to extend that connection with the European Space Agency. And as Julie mentioned uh, a second ago, we will have the world's largest radio astronomy project here in our backyard, the Square Kilometre Array. And it's something that we should be incredibly proud of because we will see the world, the universe, in an unprecedented manner in the not too distant future. And just to let you know that we already do have a massive supercomputer here in Western Australia, the Pawsey supercomputer. That's just over there on the other side of the river. And that is going to be upgraded so that it'll be 10 times the size of its current capability. So that was uh, one of the initiatives that was announced in the last budget as well. So over the last year, we've seen a real burst of activity in the space agencies. You know, if you go back to the middle of last year, when Arthur Sinodinus uh, announced that Megan was going to do a review, to where we are now. Right, we've played catch up, we've played leapfrog, we've actually gone incredibly fast uh, to have established a space agency and have a very clear direction. So, you know, these are the areas that Megan has highlighted. You know, the, the eight key focus areas of the space agency. I won't go through them in detail, obviously, because Megan's just covered that, but it just clearly shows where this country sees that it can play a role at a, at a national and then international level. So where does Western Australia sit in this particular scenario? Well, at the end of last year, uh, we were aware that the, the Space Agency uh, conversations were going on, so we commissioned ASIL Allen to uh, do an analysis of space agency cap or space capability within Western Australia, pr focusing primarily around industrial capability. And what they came up with was not surprisingly, you've already heard several of the speakers saying this, that our longitude and our latitude provide us with some really unique uh, elements. You know, we've got global coverage uh, for space assets. We're able to follow launches. Um, we, we're, we have great capability in GNS. Uh, our environment, who would have thought a whole lot of nothing out in the middle of nowhere was going to be a comparative advantage? But it is. It's radio quiet. There's a lot of space. And if you go out to the square kilometre array, it's round about the area of the Netherlands. And there are 114 residents there. Think about that for a second, right? There's not a lot of people there, there's not a lot of noise. It's an ideal place to be doing radio quiet, radio astronomy. 
Um, we have the Poise supercomputer, as I mentioned, and we have great communications expertise and computational power that's already emerged in a short uh, period of time. Um, one thing I would like to say, though, with um, there we go, um, is that uh, probably a decade ago, there were very few, if any, radio astronomers here in Western Australia. Am I correct in that, Peter? We now have close to 200 radio astronomers. And I think this is a, a great example of where if you have a vision and you fund it and you back it, you can actually go right to the forefront internationally. And I think this is something that we should be proud of as Australians, where we saw an opportunity, really went for it, and now we have the world's largest radio telescope going to be built in our backyard. So the ACEL Allen review also identified we have space, uh, as substantial capabilities in our remote operations of space systems, lots of ground stations. Uh, we've got training programs that can be embellished. And already you've heard about the space-derived activities that many of our companies are engaged in. And I have to say, I was really surprised when we heard that there were 74 companies in Western Australia that were active, dare I say, in this space. Right? Since then, since that report's come out, we think the number is closer to 100. And that's really exciting. And I, I, I can't get over the number of people who come knocking on my door now saying, well, you know, we're doing ROVs, remotely operated vehicles, underwater, subsea stuff. Can we do something in space? And the activity that's just been generated, the excitement that's been generated because of the announcement of the space agency has been remarkable. It has galvanized a whole, a whole lot of people to start thinking a little bit outside of what they're currently doing. So we've got opportunities, as you've heard several times, in space situational awareness. And uh, you'll be hearing from Phil Bland later about uh, the Desert Fireballs, uh, which is you know, a really exciting uh, 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 agreement that's been reached with, with Lockheed Martin. We've got opportunities for optical communications, uh, space ops, um, defense. We should never forget the dual purpose uh, nature of, of space. And how we can apply this this incredible amount of knowledge that is just exponentially increasing to our current industries in oil and gas, in mining, in, in agriculture, and all sorts of different other areas. So it's seen by ACEL Island this is going to be the greatest area for economic growth in the immediate future for, for Western Australia. I've just put up here a, a, a very a simplistic overview of uh, some of the assets and the opportunities here in Western Australia. You know, longitude and latitude clearly there, uh, the square kilometre array, and the precursors that are there now, the CSIRO's ASCAP is there. We have the Murchison Wide Field Array is up there, generating huge amounts of knowledge and data already. All of our universities are partnering with the CSIRO to come up with fantastic new discoveries. And this is a very exciting time uh, in, in this whole area. We've got lots of ground stations. And as you can see, there's a whole lot more space out there. We could put a whole lot more out into uh, the vast wilderness of Western Australia. And um, as we've already heard a couple of times, Airbus have got the Zephyr. That's the photo of the Zephyr there. That's what's going to be pushed along by between five and seven people to get launched. And it's going to be up there for three months at a time. Quite remarkable. OK, so what we've tried to do is on the left-hand side is the, uh, the, the, uh, the clear uh, areas of where the Australian Space Agency uh, is intending to, to go. And we've tried to map out West Australia's capabilities to see where can we play in this space. The dad jokes are just getting worse and worse. You've got to stop it. Um, one of the things that uh, we see as a great opportunity is to actually have a mission control here. And you'll be hearing more from Simon Driver about this shortly, um, where uh, we, we have great capability already. If you looked at uh, the Rio Tinto facility, it really does look like you know uh, a, a, a mission control center not for space, but for remote activities. And if you're doing remote 1,500 kilometers away, you know, space is just a fraction more remote. And uh, what we've listed there are a bunch of other activities where we see Western Australia has got really unique capabilities. And uh, the opportunities, really, uh, for this state 
uh, are quite vast. And what we are keen to do is to make sure that we're collaborating with all the other states, make sure that what we're doing is complementary to other activities that are going on nationally, so that we as a nation will benefit from cohesive approaches into space and not wasting our time with internecine warfare. I'd like to uh, ask you to thank somebody special who spoke earlier today, who is heading up the Australian Space Agency, who is an inspiration to all of us. Would you please put your hands together for Megan Clark? OK, I'll just finish off very quickly uh, by some current capabilities that we have here in Western Australia. You've heard about our mining and transport uh, industries. You've heard about LNG extraction, Woodside, Chevron, Shell. We're hearing from Woodside and, and Shell later on today. They're dealing in hostile environments, onshore and offshore. Right? We know how to do remote hostile. We do it well. Autonomous vehicles. 70% of the world's autonomous mining vehicles are present in Western Australia. We've got serious capability in this area. We do robotic, uh, robotic mining and maintenance. We've got sensors that are going out of, out of this world, essentially, and artificial intelligence to enable us to decipher the information that's coming through in real time. High-performance compute, high computing, I mentioned PAUSI, but there is another little gem here in Western Australia called Down Under Geo Solutions. Now, some of you probably haven't heard about it, but this company on the corner of Kings Park Road and Thomas Street has got 300 staff, international company, and they have a supercomputer that's only 10 times bigger than the Pawsey supercomputer. One of those, another one of those hidden gems from Western Australia. So we can do lots of data analytics, 3D modelling. Cyber security is also a real strength in Western Australia. We have the uh, uh, Centre for Cyber Security at Edith Cowan University. We do remote health and med telemedicine. And perhaps somewhere down the track, maybe even an opportunity for space tourism. Where's Enrico? I right, need to have a chat to him later. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a pleasure to uh, address you and provide you with some of the uh, the capabilities that we see uh, here in Western Australia. This is a unique moment in our history. We believe that this is a way uh, that's going to provide great opportunities for Western Australia. And I'll finish by saying, Nuna Kort, Kadala, Nala, Jinang Jinda. Today, everyone, we're looking towards the stars. And on one last note, I just got Yokai Wallach. Go Eagles. Thank you. Yeah.